So I promised a supplementary slide on uh, Cox's um, proof that um, in order to perform consistent inferences, you need uh, to use the rules of probability and anything else just doesn't cut it and will result in inconsistencies. And so we're going to take a few minutes just to go through through that here. This is completely non-examinable and not something that's going to turn up in the exam, but um, it's uh, sort of useful background knowledge to have. And essentially what I'll do is not talk through the proof itself, but talk through the axioms that Cox uses. And then Cox um, uh, sort of manipulates a set of sort of reasonable sounding axioms in order to show that they can only be satisfied if you use the, the product rule and the sum rule. So what are those axioms? Well, first off, the sort of zeroth axiom is exactly what we said in the lecture um, previously, which is that the um, we're going to want to represent the plausibility of any setting of the parameters given the data using um, a, a, a real number. So the goal of inference in some sense is to return plausibility or degree of belief in any setting of the, in the value of lambda. Um, and we're going to assume in our first action that this is just going to be represented by a single scalar real number. Okay, so that's our first action. And, and I in fact showed you this in, in the lecture, although I didn't make it explicit as being a, an action, because I showed you this, this curve here and said this is the typical curve that we might want back from this method that for any setting of lambda tells us um, how, how plausible it is. The second action, again, seems hard to argue with, is that we should take into account all the evidence that we see. So if you're given a data set, you can't arbitrarily leave out parts of that data set. You just have to use all of the, the data set in here. Um, and so I don't think that's also something that really can be argued with as being a, uh, an irrational axiom. It's sort of um, guaranteed to be uh, rock solid. Action number three is the important one. And again, I talked a little bit about this in the lecture. It's consistency. If you can reason in more than one way about um, the posterior distribution, so if you can com compute the plausibility in more than one way, then each must lead to precisely the same answer. Um, so in the lecture, I gave this example that if the data are IID, um, it shouldn't matter which order I process the data or update my plausibility estimates. Uh, by the end, when I arrive at the last data point, I should get the same answer as if I'd traversed the data set in a, in a different order. Um, and then the fourth axiom, which, which turns out to be important, but relatively benign, is that equivalent states of knowledge imply the same plausibility assignment. So if uh, two uh, sets of data or a priori knowledge are the same, we should arrive at the same, uh, for a particular setting of lambda, we should arrive at the same plausibility assignment for that setting of, setting of lambda. And this is really a technical condition that's required to get the, the proofs to go through. And given those four axioms, it's gonna turn out that the only way to manipulate these, these beliefs is to follow the rules of probability, uh, i.e. Uh, use the product rule or the sum rule. If you want more on this, I would look at James's online textbook, which I'll, I'll link to after this lecture, um, which actually goes through the steps of deriving these, um, deriving these rules. It just uses a bit of integration in order to, to ar arrive at them and is relatively simple.